what is the last group of seed plants. It is the angiosperms. They are the flowering plants. That's right, it's time for the angiosperm hour here on KUER, the nation's only call-in radio show where you spend all day talking about seed plants. All right, callers, we're ready. Sitting by the phones. Call in any time now. Any time. Ring, ring, ring. Oh boy, I'm so excited to call into this radio program. Uh, hello? Hello? Yes, you're on the air. Oh, great. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. Uh, I just had a question. How many phyla are in the angiosperms? That was a stupid question. The answer is one. All right, next caller. No, 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 no. I, I'm not done yet. Um, what are flowers? Look, they're basically modified leaves, all right? Uh, not all flowers have all these parts, but they got sepals, petals, stamens, and carpels. Uh, you know, these are things for sexual reproduction for angiosperms. Do you have any other questions? Yes, I do. Um, what is fruit? That's just a leftover ovary. You know, that female part of the flower that houses the gametophyte. Yeah. And you see, once it gets pollinated and karyogamy happens, then we get a new, what generation? Sporophyte. Very good, very good. Now, please, hang up. Hey, look at that. That's a fruit. Seriously. That's right. The fruit has seeds inside of it. Pretty cool. So all seeds from inside a fruit? <clears throat> no, but all fruit has seeds. What about seedless watermelon? Shut up. All right, well, that was the worst call-in show of all time. Uh, you remember the gymnosperm life cycle? Right, alternation generations, we got pollen, ovules, and all that good stuff. All right, so same thing in angiosperms with one kind of big difference. Just one little change there, and that's called double fertilization. So let's take a look at that. All right, so double fertilization in flowering plants. Zooming in here on a flower as slowly as possible, seeing some flower parts petals and stamens and filaments and all that good stuff. Look up a diagram. Slowly zooming in. All right, this is the female part. Okay, is this haploid or diploid? Well, it starts out diploid, this is sporophyte generation, and undergoes meiosis, there you go. So now we've got haploid nuclei. Now, in like a lot of living things, you know, we start out with four after meiosis, and then three of them die off, all right? So we got one haploid nucleus, cytoplasm swells, it's surrounded by female diploid tissue, then we go through, count them, one, two, three rounds of mitosis, all right? So we got all these cloned haploid nuclei, floating around, they start to migrate, all right? Two of them migrate into the center, and three migrate to each end of the cell and start to lay down cell walls, okay? This is all still just the female part. We're looking at the gametophyte generation right now, all right? Surrounded by sporophyte diploid tissue. And there it is, the one in red, that's the gamete. So the gametophyte made a gamete. Yippee. Now we're gonna slowly zoom out. Maybe, so, yep, there we go. Okay. And we're zooming out to the male gametophyte. 
right? Right now we're still looking at diploid tissue. There, those are the male gametophytes. We know them as pollen, all right? So just two main cells. We've got a generative cell and a tube cell. Little bug comes along, picks up some pollen, or the wind takes it, or whatever. Where's it go? Ah, home sweet home. But it's not at the ovule yet. Nope. So this happens in all seed plants. The pollen actually has to make a pollen tube and grow down to find its way to the ovule. All right, so this pollen tube has made it down there. It's following chemical signals. And there it is. That's the key difference in the, um, the flowering plants as opposed to the gymnosperms. Okay. The sperm goes through one round of mitosis, the sperm nucleus. So we get double sperm, thus double fertilization. One fertilized the egg, and the other one went up and fertilized, well, those other two haploid nuclei hanging out. So we've got a diploid there in red now, and then triploid inside the cytoplasm. All right, so we've got triploid tissue hanging out, one copy from the male part, two identical copies from the female, and that's the germ of the seed. Okay, When it goes triploid, crazy things start to happen. It starts growing, laying out food stores and stuff. So that's where all the food packaged in the seed begins to take shape. The embryo itself starts growing in that diploid cell, right? that fertilized egg.